What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here and welcome to my LG K51 review. So let's get started. So this is my LG K51 review. Now, if you're not familiar with this phone prior to watching this video, the LG K51 is one of the company's latest budget devices. Now, currently the phone is being offered at Boost Mobile for $89.99. I'm not sure if or when or if ever the device will make its way over to other carriers or be available unlocked, but I know at least at the moment you can get it from Boost. Now, the actual MSRP for the phone is $149.99. That carrier is offering a pretty significant discount on the phone. So I'd imagine that if the phone ever does actually become available factory unlocked, it likely will be around $150. But definitely take a look at the links in the video description as I will continue to update those as the phone becomes more available in other places. Now, to be honest, LG has been pretty weak when it comes to budget smartphones over the last couple of years. Their only budget phone that has really had some level of success is their Stylo series, and even that has been kind of neglected by the company. But it looks like with the popularity of Samsung's A series, LG is finally starting to realize how important this segment of the smartphone market is. And with all their various K-series phones that, are, that have already been launched and are up and coming this year, it looks like they might be turning things around. Now this phone does have quite a few concerning aspects about it that I will address in this video. And I'm not really sure that LG is putting in as much effort as they potentially could to become a dominant company in this segment of the industry. But the LG K51 is certainly one of their best attempts that they've made in a while. Now this device features a 6.5 inch display. The display itself is LCD. It's a 720p display with a PPI of 293 and it has a 19 and a half by 9 aspect ratio. So I like that we're getting a very large display with the LG K51. I remember it wasn't too long ago that if you were to buy a budget phone, you were pretty much limited to a bunch of options with small screens. Things have certainly changed since then, as Samsung offers a variety of different A-series phones with large displays as well. But I'm glad to see though that with the LG K51, we are getting a 6.5 inch display. Now the actual image on the display does look pretty decent as well. Things are decently crisp and clear. It's not the brightest display ever, and the viewing angles could be better than they are. But for the most part, I am happy though with the way that this display does look. I think for the price of the phone, it certainly is adequate. Now at the top of the device, we do have a 13 megapixel front facing camera. And later on in the video, I will be showing you photo and video samples from all the different cameras on the device. We're getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage with the phone and SD card expansion. So 32 gigs is also very impressive for a phone in this price range. Of course, as apps continue to get bigger and bigger as time goes on, we will continue to need phones with larger amounts of storage. But I'm so glad though that LG did give this phone 32 gigs in comparison to potentially giving it 16. Now there's no wireless charging with the LG K51, but we do have a fingerprint sensor on the back and the fingerprint sensor is nice and quick, so that's good to see. Now, unfortunately, there is no face unlock with the device, which is something that the Galaxy A11 does have, so I certainly wish they would have included it with the LG K51 to make this phone as competitive as possible. There's also no wireless charging with the LG K51, but since the company is a bit of an underdog in the industry at the moment, I think they should have included wireless charging because it would have really set them apart. Now on the back of the device, we're getting a triple camera setup. So this is a really good thing to see. We're getting a 13 megapixel main camera, a five megapixel ultra wide angle camera at 115 degrees, and a two megapixel depth sensing camera. So definitely a major step in the right direction to be getting an ultra wide angle camera with a budget phone from LG. I believe this is one of the first times that they've offered this with a budget device. I know that the other K series phones like the K51S, K61, all those different devices, they're all gonna have ultra wide cameras as well. So I'm glad though to see that LG is finally adding more and more features to their budget phones to actually make them decent. 
We're also getting portrait mode with both the front and rear cameras, which is excellent to see as well. We're getting three gigabytes of RAM with the phone and the MediaTek Helio P22. Now, if you're not too familiar with the MediaTek Helio line of processors, the P22 is one of their lower end processors, but still a lot better than many of the other chipsets that MediaTek has put out in the past. Now, I did run a benchmark test with the phone and I'll show you the score right now, but I got an overall score of, wait for it, here it is, there it is, 83255. So that's pretty close to the benchmark score that I got with the Samsung Galaxy A11. And I will be doing a comparison video with this phone and that phone, but certainly for the price of this device, I am satisfied with this score. This phone will definitely be adequate for basic tasks like browsing the web, doing phone calls, text messages, all that will be great on here. And I am definitely glad though that they did give us three gigs of RAM compared to two gigs of RAM, which is what we get with the A11. Now video recording with the device maxes out at 1080p. We're getting a 4,000 milliamp hour internal battery with the phone, so a pretty beefy battery. Now unfortunately, the LG K51 runs Android 9 Pie. I don't know how or why a new phone would come out this late into 2020 and still feature Pi, especially when Android 10 is about to be replaced by Android 11. I don't get it. I have no idea when it's going to be updated, if ever, to Android 10. Definitely don't count on it. I would buy this phone expecting that it will probably have Android 9 Pi forever, if not for a long time. And that is a bit unfortunate. Now, for the majority of people out there, Android 10 doesn't offer too many new features that would be noticeable. And this will still work fine with basically every app that you're going to be using on the phone. So I wouldn't consider Pi on here being a deal breaker, but certainly something that is a bit disappointing. There's also no NFC with the LG K51. So if you want to do mobile payments with the device using that technology, then you simply cannot do it. But taking a closer look at the hardware here on the device, again, like I mentioned before, we are getting a water drop notch on the phone. That's not really a big deal, but we are getting a pretty thick bottom bezel on the phone. So nowadays in 2020, it seems like a lot of device manufacturers are moving more towards having a hole punch for the front facing camera and small bezels throughout. And it seems like this design here from LG reminds me more of a design that you'd get in early 2019, if not late 2018. So LG is about a year behind on the designs of their devices, at least for this device. So they certainly do still have quite a few things to work on. But this particular design certainly comes down to personal preference, whether or not you wanna go with it or not. And considering that this phone is being offered at a really good price, and we're getting a lot of other benefits with it. I would not necessarily say that this older design here is a deal breaker. Now taking a look at the left side of the device, we have the volume buttons and we have the Google Assistant button. Now this button is something that I'm not too crazy about because personally I never use it. Google Assistant is not something that is of too much usefulness to me. And I wish that this button could be remapped to other things, but unfortunately you don't have that ability. Taking a look at the right side of the phone, we have the power button and slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the top of the device, we have the noise canceling microphone. And then on the bottom of the phone, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have the microphone USB-C port for charging and data transfer. So certainly nice to see that we are getting USB-C with the phone and we're getting a speaker. Then on the back of the phone, we're getting the triple camera setup, we're getting the fingerprint sensor, LG logo, and that's about it. So I do like that we're getting a very nice clean design here on the back of the phone. I feel like the LG K51 does feature a very premium design. I certainly feel like this phone looks a lot more expensive than it really is. Of course, the build quality here isn't the most premium ever as we're getting a plastic band around the device instead of metal, like we would get with maybe a more higher end phone. But still, I think LG did design the K51 decently well, and it does certainly feature a very practical design. Now, if you're looking for a device to use your favorite social media apps like Instagram, then the LG K51 will get the job done. You can see here scrolling is nice and smooth, which I appreciate. You can also swipe over to access the camera. And then from here, you can record videos, take photos, whatever you want to do. But the quality from the front camera is pretty decent. But the quality from the front camera is pretty decent. The microphone quality is also very good. And then if you want to go through your stories, that's a smooth process as well. Rock. 
so that's not bad either. Now I did download quite a few of my favorite apps to use as I test out this phone and everything has worked fine. Now I am happy with the photo quality from the device. It's certainly a nice surprise here with the phone that we are getting a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle camera. Now certainly the ultra wide camera should not be used in every situation. The first thing about it that makes it inferior to the regular camera is that it is a lower megapixel count. But in addition to that, you're going to get mitigated performance when taking photos in low light, for example, and in general, the photos just won't look quite as good. But in return, you are able to take wider angle photos. So that's great if you want to take pictures of buildings, of nature, of groups of people. All of that is great to use the ultra wide angle camera for. But pretty much for anything else, I would resort to using the 13 megapixel camera because you can also take close up photos with that camera. And that really should be the main camera that you use with the phone. But in situations where ultra wide does offer benefits, then use the ultra wide angle camera. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here coming at you with a front facing video from the LG K51. So let me know what you think of the quality from the device and whether or not you think it's good or bad. And also let me know what you think of the microphone quality as well. Really curious to know what you think. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here coming at you with a 1080p test video from the LG K51 using the standard camera. There is autofocus in video mode. Let me know what you think of the microphone quality from the device. And here's an ultra wide angle video from the LG K51. Now one of the things that I noticed as I'm recording these videos is that the standard mode like the non wide angle mode really crops in quite a bit and you do get a lot of crop in as well with the ultra wide camera and it seems like after it does crop things in it looks like a regular camera so that's kind of interesting still cool though that we can record video with the ultra wide camera but let me know what you think of the quality so there's certainly a lot of things to like and dislike about the LG K51. However, I feel like this is a decent attempt from LG to regain their dominance in the budget phone market. So here's the things that I like about the phone. I like that we're getting a very large display on the device. I like that we're getting USB-C. I like that we're getting 32 gigs of storage considering the price of the phone itself. I like that we're getting a large battery. I also like the performance. I think the MediaTek Helio P22 is a decent choice. It certainly won't give you anywhere near a flagship level of performance, but it does make the device competitive in its particular segment. I also don't mind the water drop at the top of the phone. I would have preferred a hole punch, but this is fine. And I really do appreciate that the LG K51 has a really big display. I also like that we're getting an ultra wide angle camera. That's really good to see too. And I like that we're getting portrait mode with both the front and rear cameras on the phone. But what I don't like is that we're getting Android 9 Pie with this phone. I wish the Google Assistant button was remappable to do other things. And those are really the only downsides with the device. Really the biggest issue with the phone is that there's no Android 10. I don't get it. Seriously, come on LG, give us Android 10. <laughs> or at least Android 11 as soon as it comes out. I'm not sure what's going on here. Why does this phone have Android 9 Pie when it's only been launched so far at one carrier and hasn't even become available yet unlocked or at other carriers? They're really falling behind when it comes to the software. What I really would have liked to see with the LG K51 is that they put Android 1 on here instead of their own skin so that we'd get more of a stock Android experience with the phone. That would have been amazing, but I know that LG will probably never do that for whatever reason, but that's really what consumers would be excited about. So is the LG K51 a bad choice? No, it's not a bad choice. However, you do need to consider what other options are available to you and you might want to consider the Samsung Galaxy A11 if you can get it on your same carrier, or even the Samsung Galaxy H20. I think either of those two phones would be better choices than the K51, 
but this is still a solid attempt by LG at creating a decent budget phone. But I hope you enjoyed this video about the LG K51. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and give me any other requests you'd like me to do involving this device and other budget phones. But this is Kevin here. This is my LG K51 review, and I will see you in the next video.